I want you to come back to shh, after you did your review questions and immediately you wrote a bunch of derivatives and the corresponding integrals. Do you remember that? Can you go to where that is on your page? Right at the start of today's lesson. And then we wrote this. And we were like, like what, what do we do with this? Okay. Now I want to tie up that uh, loose thread for you. Now, this is really important because you might have noticed some of the questions we did during this lesson lean towards this but don't quite lay it out for you. One of the tricky things in maths is often a question you know how to do is just written in a form that makes it look weird and awkward. For example, one that um, I think Shambhavi, maybe you and I were looking at, was something like this. Correct me if I'm wrong. Something like that. Something like this, right? Now this doesn't look like, this doesn't look like something you know how to do, except you all do. Because this um, cos squared on the denominator, a way to write it that makes it more readily obvious is by using a trig identity. What trig identity helps us write a reciprocal? It's in this case the reciprocal of cos, which is it's sec, right? So this is actually how the question should be written, right? and you're like, oh, I know how to deal with that. Okay, now shh. the same thing happens here. Um, Except it's going to look weird because I'm going to make it look worse before it looks better. Um, 10x is an abbreviation. It's a trig identity itself. What's in an abbreviation Sine for? Over Sine over cos. Now, normally, normally we would say, well, why would you write it like this? It takes more time. It's extra. But the point is, it's like this. We're not quite there yet. This is a better form to make it clearer to us that we actually do know how to integrate this. Okay. This is a fraction. I've written it in a fraction to call to mind the kinds of integrals you know how to deal with that are fractions, right? We've been dealing with these, okay? Now what we want is something that looks like f dash on f, right? Now this, this is the f we're dealing with right now, okay? What's the f dash that corresponds to it? It's negative sign, isn't it? Be careful, the negative is flying around, very easy to confuse. The derivative of this is negative sine. Do I have that on the numerator? No, I don't, but that's okay, because I can make it a negative if, provided, I compensate with another negative. Two negatives make that positive. You good with me so far? So now that, that's the f dash that I want. Do you agree? There's f dash. So now I'm good to go. I'm in exactly this form. So let's do it. Uh, and I'd love you to write this with me, right? What happens to this minus sign at the front? Uh, just, it, just, it just hangs out there, right? Just hangs out. This is f dash on f. So its integral is log of f of x. There it is, right there, plus my constant of integration, OK? So you could see it was kind of hiding in plain sight. It was a bit cheeky of us to not tell you right out the front, but um, it's quite difficult to wrap your head around all the signs and cos and signs, signs that go with the signs. So I didn't want to show you this right away. But you can see this is similar, um, similar. what's the word I'm looking for, ground to what we've covered before, so long as you can learn to see it in a way that's helpful. Okay. By the way, um, actually, is that on the reference sheet? I don't know that it is. It's not because it's the combination of this and all of your knowledge of trigonometry. So being that you can combine those together to get this, they don't give it to you straight away. Okay.